Welcome back. In this third segment, we're going to be talking about PixHawk. We've already covered open source, open standards, and now we're going to deep dive into PixHawk because PixHawk really makes those two earlier segments a real part. And Lawrence, you live for PixHawk. You, PixHawk has been a huge part of your life. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so it actually is a quite funny story because um, it, you know, sometimes key innovations in an industry are a, I wouldn't say random, but but a a, a life story in a way. And Pixar was really initially not intended to be the number one hardware autopilot unit and standard that is today powering the largest part of the drone industry and if you see a new cargo drone video or announcement chances are for most of the players that there is a pixhawk in it they have adopted it they have made modifications and of course there's a lot of innovation in all these systems but what people rarely talk about is well we're actually standing on the shoulders of open source and open hardware and now we're making the next commercial step. It, it feels like there's always a need to really talk about how your one company is so different and, and how you do everything. And even sometimes when you ask them, it's like, hey, what are you using? It's like, oh, we made our own. Um, and then a year or two later, the same people ask for support uh, and you learn how they did their own. Um, so it all started 2008. Um, at, at the point where I wanted to start my master thesis, uh, not thesis, master uh, curriculum. And I wanted to do a drone that would avoid obstacles indoors, which 2008 was visionary and not even ground robots at the time were doing that uh, all day long yet. And now naive as I was as a bachelor student, just starting my master's, I thought like, okay, how hard can it be? Um, I'll just put it together. And a month in or so, I realized like, oh, this is actually a hard problem. But interestingly enough, I decided to not back down, but instead asked my professor if I could organize a student team and if he saw ways to assign student projects and all of that. Um, his, his name is Mark Poliface and he's really a fantastic enabler of this whole industry too. And so I recruited 14 students, some of them way f further into their studies than, than I was myself. And we built our own hardware, our own software, and uh, c did compete in a drone competition, actually won it um, after like nine months of work, which is crazy in retrospect. And the drone already had onboard computer vision which nobody did at the time, like literally nobody did that. And it was able to recognize certain patterns, uh, like a picture on a wall, it was able to recognize which picture was on the wall while flying in this indoor uh, environment through it. And right after that, I thought like, oh, that was cool. So let's continue that. Let's do this in the next year as well. And at the same time, it felt to me that as I was looking into the wider industry, there wasn't a lot around yet that could be used and that some of the things we did might be useful to others. So I decided to open source software and hardware. So we open sourced the ground station, carry ground control. We open sourced the communication protocol, Mavlink, uh, flight control software, PX4, and the hardware design, Pixhawk. And uh, then I think one or two years later, starting to th end 2012, early 2013, that open hardware design started to get adopted by more and more companies, uh, notably 3D Robotics, and became a product. So people could buy it, it ran software, you can make your drone fly autonomously. But that was all based on that initial work of that student team. and. I think overall it were 50 or 60 students that participated in our various iterations in that effort. Um, so big thanks to, to all of them. And so really what it is, Pixhawk is user innovation in hardware, bringing the different components that you need to run um, open source software in a drone into a box. You can 
think of it as the Arduino of drones or the Raspberry Pi of drones or whatever, whatever tech reference you might have. And it is really what is, what is powering, in particular, the commercial drone industry today. Pretty much all of the cargo drones out there run some of that hardware, uh, some of that software in, in some fashion. And with that, it also set the standards on how drones are uh, being put together from a, from a hardware microcontroller interfacing perspective and even the connectors. Um, we picked the GST GH connectors a couple years back and if you look now into various accessories and hardware units that you can buy, it is the connectors that Pixhawk started to use and then a whole industry followed suit. So how does it make you feel in, in 2008 you, you start this project, you, you had a, a big vision and maybe naively thinking it was, couldn't be that difficult. And now we're in 2021, uh, half year has already gone by. We're seeing more and more real life use cases that are based on something you had in your mind in 2008. How does that make you feel? Uh, of, of course, incredibly proud, but at the same time, I have to say, I. I think I can take credit for having started this particular open hardware um, project, but really I was part of a larger movement of different open source projects, also the, the open source projects that I personally have not contributed to uh, on racing, on, on other efforts, uh, like projects that are more used by um, uh, personal users. And it's so it's generally there's like 50, 60 open source projects in the drone space. Some of them, most of them are supporting or using Pixhawk. Some of them even have developed their own hardware over the years and particularly in the racing space. Um, and so for me, this is, this is one big family, one big movement where we all together as developers have created the foundations of an industry. And you can argue that the drone industry in contrast to a lot of other industries has started as open source first. So yes, there are proprietary solutions, but really the innovation and the backbone of it is around open source, open hardware. And so I can, you know, I feel really good about that, but because we as a movement with all these developers have built something collectively and sometimes also competitively, which is extremely healthy, um, that has brought this industry forward. And so I can only congratulate to everybody who has contributed either in these projects that I have been part of or in other projects or even competing projects. Again, it really shows the power behind a group, behind a movement, where it's not just one, it's an entire industry that comes together, an ecosystem that moves all of this forward. So we've talked about open standards, open source, PixHawk. Now in our next segment, we're gonna talk about Enterprise PX4. Stay tuned. <laughs>